Now, hello folks. Tonight we're looking at Budweiser and Clamato Chilada Picante. This is a, a little bit extra spiced one, but I don't think anybody here tonight is going to find that it's particularly hot or spicy. Uh, it came out a few years ago. None of them have been out too long. Uh, Bill said he found this easier than ever. Any of the others. Uh, I don't think the brew dude had trouble finding it. William, did you have trouble finding it? No, it, it's it's pretty widespread in this area. Okay, so tonight it's me, Louisiana Beer Reviews. We've got Bill McIntosh from Florida. Uh, we've got Jose from the West Coast, California, Los Angeles County. And we've got William from North Carolina. Uh, I was going to tell you off air, but I wanted to start exactly 6.30. I was trying to find that Kentucky gentleman, and I... I know it's a Sazerac brand, and I wrote an email to the company, and I asked, did they sell it around here? I never got a response, and I wasn't too happy about that because they have an email. Yeah. So I'm going to call them tomorrow if I remember because there's a 1-800 number, and I'm going to say, do you sell it down here? It's an easy question to answer. I All looked right. on the website, and unlike the Kentucky Dale, this is featured prominently on their regular website. And I checked the barcode on the example, and mine is the 80 proof blend. They also make a 74 proof straight bourbon. So it's listed under the bourbon category on the website. Oh, okay. And uh, the ones I did the taste challenge for two days ago was the, uh, or yesterday morning was the uh, Kentucky Dale versus, uh, I did Kentucky Dale. I, I know, Brudu, we're about to get to, <laughs> sorry. For interview. No, you're good, man. Kentucky Dale versus, and that's from Sazerac versus um, Beam's Eight Star from Beam Suntory. And uh, but you brought up the Kentucky gentleman idea, so I said I'm going to try to find out. So I'll try to call him tomorrow. Okay. Um, it's all. I'm try, I'll try to look for him on my side too, man. See it's all. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes you will find the oddest things, you know, in the yeah, oddest yeah. places. Well, I'm going to start rolling my beer. This is 5% alcohol. It's about 157 calories for 12 ounces, which is not really that bad for a tomato beer. Um, and it's got the lime flavor and the salt and the clam broth and the tomato juice and the extra spicy sauce. My can says uh, 313th day of 2016, and it's saying SHO353. That must be in St. Louis. Mine is uh, 16, 3, 12. One day difference. One day difference. You got the same bottom, the factory code S? Uh, S for St. Louis. And the I think the last four numbers are the time that is can. Like 2246 military time would be uh, 1026 p.m. So I think that's what the last four are. And they probably work in 24 hours at these. Oh, yeah. All of these are like the. You, they, I've had beers that were brewed at 1 a.m. Or, or canned in 11 p.m. It, it's nonstop for these big breweries. I was on a brewery tour with uh, Maria, who used to hang out with me. And uh, we we were in June in of last year, 2016. We were in a FX Matt, which is an old 1888. It's been open since 1888 brewery. It's a pretty big regional brewery, okay? It's not like a small operation. But we were on the tour, and the guy says, uh, as you're saying, it's so incredible. It's so big. It's so big. And I said, Maria, if you saw the Anheuser-Busch brewery, you would think this is tiny. And so the man said, yeah, let me tell you. He said, what we brew in a year, Anheuser-Busch breweries brew twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, that's the difference in scale. He said, it's hard to believe, but that's the calculation. So it takes them a year to brew what Anheuser-Busch does twice a day. So it's amazing. Yeah. And the FX Matt family is doing pretty well. It's it's a family owned thing and they make a lot of beers that you may have heard of like Saranac and uh, other things. But, uh, and uh, Utica Club, which was the first beer produced after Prohibition sent to the White House. But anyway, let's go to this. Now, I poured mine, I shook, I didn't shake it, I rolled it, and uh, I got this pink thing for this. Pink. 
very similar color here on my side as well. And I put mine in a Budweiser chalice as they suggested on the website. Uh, yours is orange more than pink. It yeah, does. I mean, I, it's, it's probably more lighting and everything, but it has that like my, on my side. I see a little orange, a little a little pink in there. Um, the head was amazing when I poured it, but then it just dissipated immediately because that salt. Yeah, I got a two finger head, but it went away very quickly. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna try to start the online chat. Some people had, well, one, one viewer said, I don't like you doing that. I don't think it makes it as good because it distracts from the discussion. I said, I'm not sure if it does or not, but it, I think it includes the viewers more. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'll defer to what y'all think. Actually, I could take it either way, but I like to include the viewers. But, you know, what do y'all think? You think it's better not to have the online chat? I think either way it's uh... – you know, interactive. I don't mind having the people interact, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a distraction, obviously, because you got to stop and answer the comments. But it is interesting. In my, that's just my opinion. I'm not a hard and fast person saying it must be this way. But it is. We are, I mean, we are streaming live. So, I mean, usually in live, you're going to have some type of uh, interaction that you want to attend to. So, I don't mind it. I never knew how to set it up until about a month ago or three weeks ago. And Lee Russell in Canada told me, if you can do tabs, you can do it. And I didn't understand what he meant, but I started looking at it and playing around with it. And I said, oh, I see what he means. And that was so helpful. Yeah. It was so helpful of him to just mention that, make that one little statement. And I realized that's how they're doing it. Because okay. you have to open up, uh, you have to open up what, YouTube through it? Yeah, and get the and get the uh, live comments on there, right? Right, but I didn't know because I, I was reading their explanation on the how to do this, and it was confusing the way I thought. Uh, to me, it, it was confusing. It must have been IKEA, IKEA, IKEA instructions. Yeah, it was like um, it was like this camera. I bought this digital Canon camera because my other one broke. I used it so much, and uh. I said, I have to be a scientist to use this camera. It's got a 330-page instruction manual, I think. <laughs> that is crazy. It's complex, but it's nice, but it's just so complicated. All right. Um, so how about, William, you go first, talking about the aroma. And has anybody never had this thing before? This is my first time. I hear some talking. Oh, that's Michael Komarov joining us. Hi, Jay. I'm just watching. I don't have any of this clamato stuff, but I'm okay. watching. Hey, Michael, you, did you grow a beard, sir? Mustache. Hey, I shaved mine because people kept saying, I like your Hitler mustache. And I was like, what? <laughs> Should have left it. I know. I tell them that's really not what I'm, I'm shooting for, but um, it's a French, French style. I thought it was. Michael, I'm going to mute it because I hear people talking in the background. And I don't want to. Okay, do it. Mute it. Go ahead. But I appreciate you watching this. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, okay, so let's see. Nothing personal. Oh, you did it. Okay, thanks, uh, Jose. All right, so Michael's over there in Brook Brooklyn, New York. And you know what? Two years ago, in 2015, I hung out at his house with Giant Space Monkey, and we had a major beer drinking festival that day. Oh, that must have been fun. I'm sure you probably want would would have wanted to have some of these the next day. You know what? I woke up the next day and it felt like I never drank anything but water. It didn't affect me at all. And um, oh, nice. And it was weird, you know, because I just got on the subway and as soon as I got to the Mets game, it was like I hadn't had a drink. And it turned out to be a no hitter, so it worked out. And I got a ticket for ten dollars on the street. I used Streetmaster. And uh, but man, nice. we drank so many beers. And then Michael was. He was interesting because he had this, he had like this notepad and he, he said, oh, what do you think about this beer? And I would say, well, it's very good. No, no, no. I need a number. I need a number. So he wanted, he wanted numbers. So that was so fun. And, uh, and if you'd have seen this line of beers, I mean, it was just unbelievable. All right. So William, you've never had it. And who else, Jose, you had it? 
I've had it, yes. And Bill, no. I, I have had it, yeah. Oh, you have had the picante. I couldn't. I couldn't wait. I cracked the first one. <laughs> oh, that's cool. well, Bill. You said you said that once you once you start it, man. It's like it's that flavor now. You know, we, we've been we've been on this mission with the no, uh, no chiladas. It, it, that wheel is going to keep turning inside you. Right, and a lot of people are reluctant to try it because they're thinking it's going to be what it isn't. Okay, so William, you've never had it, so you got the floor. You go first, and then after you do it, I'm going to um, read some of the comments. The aroma is not dissimilar from the other ones I've tried. The predominant tomato up front, that to me, that's the, the primary aroma is the tomato. And once the bomb that once you begin to taste the tomato and the spice, the pungency of it up front with the undercurrent of the alcohol providing the carbonation. That's what I think where the alcohol comes in. It, it makes the, it adds a crispness to it, which I like. And overall, this one is not, I would have to do a, a blind test to, to compare this one to the regular Budweiser. To me, this doesn't taste much more spicy, really. You don't find it's, you don't find it's appreciably spicy. No, it's not, you know, it's very subtle if it's a little bit more kick to it. But overall, you know, it's, you know, they're like, they, they both fell from the same tree. I, I can't really tell much of a difference, but I like it like the other ones. I just hate that I couldn't gotten the Tecate one because I sort of wanted to run the table like Aaron Rodgers did to get the Packers in the playoffs, but <laughs> I couldn't do that. But uh, I saw I have to settle for maybe missing by one game. Right. <laughs> oh boy! I hope you run across that Michelada one day because um, oh that Tecate one, the Tecate yeah, think, Diablo. Yeah, the Diablo. I think you're gonna love it. I'm supposed to be here next month. I'll do an online with you, uh, an ad hoc hangout if you want. And I'll and I'll jump on too if I if, if the time's right. Good job, good deal. I got mine at racetrack. Excuse me, fast fuels. They renamed it right in this area. Racetrack is now fast fuels. I got this one for two forty nine. Back on, they're gone. Oh, okay, Michael. Hey, um, two forty nine. Two forty nine. Yeah, hey, I paid two fifty nine, I think, and um, I bought it at. Oh, what's the name of that place? In uh, it's in Marrero, Louisiana. It's one of these uh, discount grocery stores where they add ten percent at the register. It's really like a scam to trick poor people but um but it's still even with the 10 percent added at the register it was still cheaper than what i would get around here so and plus it was super fresh so so i bought it and the lime and the michelada i think i can't i can't remember one of them i bought at racetrack but uh okay the brood you go you go next all right so uh the the appearance looks very similar to the other ones um it also leaves a nice little uh, tomato pulp yeah. the scent like i said is very very similar i don't smell any additional spice i know they added the picante to it but i don't i don't get any additional uh aromas than the bud light clamato and the budweiser clamato the same when it um, comes to that <clears throat> let me read some of the comments real fast i'm not going to dwell on them um but I do want to be respectful to the viewers. Um, let me, okay. Jake says, smiley face. Pro wrestling guy says, I'm not a big fan of the tomato beers in a, in a can. The only way I personally can enjoy a red beer is if I make it myself. Cheers. Well, get ready because in two weeks, that's what we're going to do. Chaz says, FX Max equals Saranac beer. That's right. And a lot of Brooklyn beers too, by the way. I haven't seen the picante version, Chaz says, and um, a lot of people apparently haven't. Jose Luis Avalos says, rather add my own Clamato to my beer than buy the Clamato Budweiser. Looks like there's a lot of home home mixers, beer drinkers out there. It's a popular one, this Clamato, I'm telling you. Uh, you get your light beer, you get your Clamato or type of tomato juice and add what you want to it. And I mean, it's a very popular thing in the Hispanic community for sure. Eric said, I thought the beer was good. The Clamato Budweiser, that is. Jake said, I never had it. Daryl E says, Budweiser goes good with orange juice. 
Oh, yeah. Well, that's a new one on me. But it might appeal. Well, everybody's putting juice in beer now, right? Seriously. Chaz says it's good. Jose Luis. I, oh, that's I just responded to them. Yeah. And then Blackie. Well, that's nice. All right. So uh, let's let's get uh Bill. What, what you getting anything different out of the uh, Romas and stuff? <clears throat> no. Uh, <clears throat> fairly similar to the other Bud products, like everybody said that we that we've had before. Um, uh, and mine for for some particular reason doesn't seem to build any any head when it's poured, but it is getting pulpy in the glass. But uh, no, nothing different than the other Bud products we have. Now, to me, there is a slight more of a spicy, peppery note in the aroma and in the flavor. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but I think it's there. But you know what? I've never done a side-by-side -side with any of these, so it's, I'm only going by memory, and I think it would be an interesting thing, but the cans are so dang big. Um, that, that's a good idea, though, that, what you just mentioned, doing a blind test of all three, all four of them. Yeah. Five of them. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd do it if I had somebody to share with me, like all the cans. I wouldn't want to drink all that at, at the same time. It's got <laughs> yeah, it's got the tomato juice. It's got the Budweiser. You know. Now, I think what scares a lot of people off is they say, "Oh, clam broth." That, I couldn't handle it. Look, you're just not going to taste that. That is not going to be a major player in these drinks. Um, now. Somebody told me they're allergic to shellfish. Well, obviously, you better avoid it at all costs. But if you're thinking this is going to taste like some kind of seafood gumbo or seafood, uh, what do they eat on the shrimp, East Coast? Shrimp cocktail or anything? Yeah, what do they eat on the East Coast? The uh, I bought a clam chowder. It's not going to taste like that, okay? Chipino. Huh? It's called Chipino, Ronald. Okay. Chapino. Chapino. Well, it's not going to taste like, it's going to taste like salty tomato juice and beer, really. That's it. And I, don't I like know. this one. I, I, I like that they did this one. I, I just tasted it. I, I'm glad they did the picante with the Budweiser rather than the Bud Light, because I remember since we tasted last time that Bud Light was kind of just too light for the tomato. It was always just tomato. Yeah. And that Budweiser, you, you were able to get some of the actual beer which is what you want. Yeah, and I did one where I put some of that um, Dave's Insanity sauce in it. Well, that gave it a lot of pep. But you can't use yeah. too much of Dave's Insanity sauce or you won't be able to drink the dang stuff. But, oh, yeah. Um, the body doesn't seem to be particularly heavy, though, to me. Yeah, no. Uh, no like I'm, I'm, I'm getting that. that, that, that uh, well, we, we did do the Tecate right before. Um, last couple weeks, yeah. But I am getting a lighter body, uh, not as heavy or anything. The tomato juice is not cloying or in any way too overpowering. I do get, I mean, in the taste, I get a little bit kind of a residual type of peppery uh, spice to it. That is what I am getting. Maybe that different than the regular traditional one, just yeah. a little bit. Right, the spiciness back of the seems throat. to linger a little bit longer after when you finish the taste. I think yeah. the, the pepper lingers a little bit longer and stays in your. But I would love to be a fly on the wall at Budweiser to know what's the percentage of beer in this, and what percentage of tomato juice and etc. Because it retains the same calorie count. Actually, it's a little bit more than a regular Budweiser. Right. So I don't know. I, like I said, I would love to know that insider information about this because, to me, that's sort of sort of puzzling. I'd love to be on a. I'd love to go into the brewery and see them make it. It's no. probably that tomato. It's probably that. No, it's Mott's. What, right? It's Mott's, right? Mott's that uh, does uh, clamato. Yeah, Mott's. They also. Yeah. The uh, the grenadine. Yeah, it's probably that sugar, that sugar and, and different things that they add to the clamato that's kicking up the calorie count. For sure. Yeah. And, but um. It'd be interesting to know how they went about doing the business arrangement. Like, how did Bud Budweiser, how did Anheuser Busch and Mott's work out their agreement? Like, 
what percentage they were going to make and everything. It's interesting how they worked that deal, but they must have been a deal where they would it would prominently feature Mott's on the can because they keep talking about Clamato. So I guess it's like a um, sort of like a mutually beneficial thing. It can promote the Budweiser and then it can promote the Clamato. And if I'm not mistaken, there might be something on the Mott's website that references this beer. I think that might be the case. So it's like they both benefit from it. And you know, so many people are buying the Mott's for the uh, the, the uh, Bloody Marys, right? Yeah. They uh, and also they have that uh, don't they have that lime juice, that rose lime juice? Roses grenadine and roses lime juice. I think that's a company that Mott's bought. You know how that goes. Everybody's buying everybody. I think Mott's is a part of the Dr Pepper Snapple group. Nice. Oh. Along with Canada Dry, it's a huge company. So, uh, but I believe that Mott's is a part of that. Oh, and that's why their headquarters is in Texas somewhere. Yeah. I think. That's good. Good point, William. And the original Dr. Pepper is somewhere in Texas, right? You can go to Texas, and there's that one county where you can get the original Dr. Pepper with the pure cane sugar instead of the corn syrup. <laughs> It's like those uh, Coca-Cola cans anyway, but Coca-Cola bottles, glass bottles. Right. Oh, and somebody told me that if you see a Coca-Cola bottle with a yellow cap, that means it's kosher for Passover. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's what somebody said, and I'm going to keep my eye out for that in the springtime. Many years ago, Coca-Cola used to have local bottling plants in small towns. Here where I live, I remember we used to have a Coca-Cola bottling company. And they would make their own brands of other sodas like grape and cherry and stuff. But you could actually go, you know, so they sold. They made Coke here in my hometown at one time. In the town just west of me, along a state highway that connects the big highway to the river road, the river road highway, there was a Pepsi cannery. That was there for decades, and they canned, only canned, but they canned a myriad of Pepsi products, and it closed down a few years ago. But that was a major employer here, this Pepsi cannery. I don't know why it closed. I think Pepsi, is a, Pepsi is a North Carolina product. Oh. Invented by a pharmacist in Newburgh, North Carolina. So it's a... It's, has its origins here along with the Wright brothers and many other things. Yeah, that's interesting. Hey, well, um, anyway, I guess we kind of exhausted this in t as far as examination. It's not that complex, although it is enjoyable in my opinion. I, the question is, would you buy it again? My answer is I would certainly buy it again because it's so enjoyable to drink. I don't see any downside to it. I just for the life of me can't find anything wrong with it. I know it's a macro, I know it's a big company and blah, 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 et cetera. But to me, it tastes good, so I drink it. Same here. I mean, what I, now if, if I was, I just went to the local store, my 7-Eleven, wherever I get my, my Clamato beers, and if they didn't have the Picante, I wouldn't, you know, crush over it because they have the traditional, the, the Budweiser Clamato original. Yeah. And, to me, like I said, there's not such of a big difference. I can probably go home and, and get my own little hot sauce if I do want it a little bit spicy and add whatever spice I want to it, and I'll be fine with it. Yeah. You know, that, would I buy it again if it's there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because they're all the same price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This would, this, be, this would be the one I would pick because I like spicier stuff, so this would be my first choice. But, okay, Bill and, uh, and uh, William and then Michael, if you got any comments about this product. This is my favorite as well. Um, uh, I, I agree with I agree with Jose that that there's not a tremendous amount of difference between this and the uh, and the other the other bug one, but of the three that I've been able to to sample, this is my favorite for sure. Uh, I'd be interested to know from Ronald and Jose how this compares to the uh, the Ticante, which I was I, I wasn't able to get. How does how does this compare? 
Oh, oh man. man. Oh man. Yeah. It's not even, it's not in the right ca- it's not in the right caliber, man. It's not even on that. I'm I'm still I'm still kind of pissed that I wasn't able to, to find that somewhere because of the of the good reviews that you guys gave it. But yeah, that, Jose. Yeah, Jose, wouldn't you agree with me that the the Tecate Michelada is a whole different ball game compared to oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah. The Tecate Diablo that 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 was just an elegant one, man. It's just it, it just had so many complex and depth layers of flavors, and it added that kind of herbiness to it, which was just amazing. Right. And we're not saying that this Anheuser Busch line is is bad, but we're saying that that what whatever Heineken Mexico or Huatemoc Montezuma did with this Tecate. Huatemoc. Quactemoc Montezuma. Okay. I'm not, <laughs> I, have, I have to practice. But whatever they did with that Diablo, it just, they elevated it. It's like they added basil and paprika. It's, it's, it, it is something else. Now, Erica Lyons fan said, okay, now Lawrence Hartnett, he said, Barks Root Beer originated in New Orleans, right, Ron? And then was bought out by Coke. I th- Love Barks. I think Barks started in Biloxi, Mississippi, or somewhere like that. But that's so close to New Orleans. It's almost like the Mississippi Gulf Coast in New Orleans is the same place. And it was, of course, when I went out, when we would go out to seafood restaurants 40 years ago, everybody would drink Barks. And it was bought out by Coke. And then Eric Alliance fan says, I'm an A and guide. <laughs> An A and W guy personally. Yeah, I like A and I don't know a thing about the company. Rod J says we are selling celebration here for eleven ninety nine to twelve pack right now. Wow, that's a dollar a beer for celebration. Eric says, I think I saw it on sale for ten forty nine, but I have a sixty cent deposit, so right, so you're not really making any headway. If you ever want to check out a spicy beer, Daryl E says Grab some Ballast Point Habanero Sculpin. It will really grab you by the boo-boo. Oh, man, I'm not sure I want to be grabbed by the (laughs) boo-boo. Rajay says, that is spicy. Well, I don't know. After my Dave's Insanity Sauce experience, it's going to take a lot to (laughs) make me appreciate alleged spiciness. I'm going to go get some more beer. Y'all talk. I've been talking too much, I think. Hey man, I'm not trying to get grabbed by the boo boo either. <laughs> Particularly not for fifteen dollars a six pack. <laughs> yeah, that's that scoping, right? Yeah. Habanero. I'm not a big habit. I like spicy foods. All right. I like spicy foods when they still when, when the when it's still about adding to the food. Once it just takes over my taste buds, it's like too much. Right. Right. That's the problem with the Daves. Yeah. You got to get a perfect mixture with the Daves in order to, like, accomplish, you know, finishing your meal. Because I did see that review that you did. and you were, I forgot what you were eating, but you are eating some dish, and you just added a little too much, I think. And Yeah, the problem with that sauce, it's so – it makes you choke. It's, yeah. it's like you start choking, and it's bad. Um, I mean, I mean, I like it. I, I wouldn't buy it again because it's expensive, but I wanted to try it. Everybody kept talking about it. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to bring it to work and let them try it. And I was telling them, I don't know. You better be ready to try this. You, you might be getting into something you're not prepared for. But I'm going to bring it, I think, the next time, if I can remember. Uh, that's why Tabasco, from Louisiana, I might add, that's why Tabasco is the number one hot sauce in the world because it, 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 it blends so well with the food. You know what I mean? It doesn't overpower the food. It's like so perfectly made with that vinegariness and it's hot, but it's not really that hot. I'm a big fan of that vinegar. It just cuts everything else. It it almost cuts the savoriness of the food and just balances out right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Tabasco myself. Oh, that is the number in my opinion, that's the number one hot sauce in the world. But I like I like when they, they added that line, you know, they do the Tabasco Chipotle, Tabasco uh, the green one. The uh, I like that they have that 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 difference. For people different that want to enjoy a different flavor yeah they had to do it because um it was just so much demand and it's over there in louisiana and but i think all their peppers come from uh yucatan peninsula of mexico if i'm not mistaken jay i have a spicy beer to show you guys can you see this 
This is from Green Flash. Whoa, Dia de los Serranos. So Serrano chilies in um, their regular double stout. 8.845 IBUs. Whoa. So it's a, it's a stout with serrano Double stout pepper. with serrano chilies as the taste. Very oh, interesting. Man. Green Flash is St. Petersburg, isn't it? No, I think it's in California. San somewhere. Diego County. San Diego. Hey, hey Mike, you know what will be so good? You'll probably put some of that in like a in, in a in a mole, like a like some kind of mole sauce. It'll probably be That's, really good. Oh, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. But this is for a special taste, though. Everybody doesn't like that extra heat that you have. Like they wouldn't like the the sculpin with the habanero because the habanero taste takes over. It's stronger than the beer. Okay. Okay. See, if you get to that high chili taste, it takes over sometimes. I don't mind it. I, and heat does not bother me at all. But, uh, Michael, I had a beer that was just dog dirty last week. And it was from uh, – it was from um, – not sweet water. Uh, what's it? terrapin? Terrapin, and it was the high ten. And that's from Atlanta or from Athens, Georgia, maybe. Yeah, high ten. That was a dog. I said, "Oh no, this thing here is incredibly bad." I don't mean I couldn't drink it. I mean I could drink it, but it was like it hit all the wrong points. I was like, "Man, this beer is a joke," and I gave it a very bad score. I think I gave it a C minus. And I was being generous. And, oh, yeah, it's 10% alcohol, but big whoop. I can get a lot of 10% alcohol beers. That's not too impressive. It just was – and a lot of other people commented. They said, oh, yeah, I had that that beer. That beer was bad business. So you never know what you're going to run across, and that was a bad one. And then D David over there in Jefferson Parish who gave it to me, he said, I knew I shouldn't have given it to you. I should have just dumped it down the drain. I said, no, I mean, I'm glad I got to try it because then you can gain perspective on things. But he was saying, Did, don't you remember I told you it was bad? I said, no, I don't remember. I was kind of in a rush that day. But uh, I don't ever dump beers down the drain. I can't help it. I have to try them, you know, even though the experience sometimes is not pleasant. Well, if you, if you uh, rate beers by style, they would probably be just as many bad craft beers as they would be micro beers. I mean, you can't assume it's because it's craft that it's always good. No doubt about it, William. Absolutely agree with that. That's been my experience. I mean, to be fair about it, you know, the law of averages would be about the same, I would think. You it's know, probably a little, it's probably actually a little more favorable towards the macros because of the taking into account that they have the, the uh, quality control that is so perfected, and you don't run into that as much with craft beers. And I know I, I'm going to have to hear the people saying, oh, you're a shill for the macros, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> if I was a shill for the macros, it's like, where's my juice? Where's my stuff? You know what I'm saying? If I'm a shill for the macros, where's my free swag? I'm not getting any of it. I get little... Oh, yeah, I mean, I've gotten some free stuff from macro companies, but it's so minimal. I've gotten 90 to 1. I bet you the ratio is 90 to 1, craft beer free stuff to macro free stuff. And furthermore, in my whole beer drinking experience, how many free items have I gotten from breweries? It's a handful. It's a joke. It's laughable. Um, so if you think it's pouring in, you're thinking wrong. Do I wish it was pouring in? Anybody that would get on the internet and say they don't want a free beer to pour into their 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 uh, address, they're lying, I think. But it's not happening here. It might be happening at your video video review and experience, but it's just not happening here. And I'm not saying I want it to happen here. I have money. I can buy stuff. But um, anyway, enough of the rant and rave with Ronald. I'm just saying I think what William's saying is correct. And quality control is a really important part of the food and beverage industry to me. And the fact that you're reviewing a micro beer does not mean that you're comparing it to a craft beer. No. Two totally, but oftentimes that's lumped together. You know, you're talking about two different things completely. If you, 
if you take the wide angle view of this whole thing, you can enjoy all types of beers. There's a train. That's the Kansas, yeah, that's the Kansas City Southern. I think it usually comes by around seven o'clock. And it runs from Los Angeles. It pretty much parallels I-10, if I'm not mistaken. It runs from LA to Jacksonville, Florida, I think, Kansas City Southern. And there's a lot of branches to it. It's huge. It's a huge railroad company. Um, well, I've been thoroughly pleased with this Budweiser Clamato Picante, or Chilada Picante. I mean, thoroughly pleased. So if anybody's got any negatives, please speak up. No one's under any obligation to agree with me. Well, the only, uh, I don't want to say negative, but they do put the picante in there. I would want to have a little bit more picante. You know, just a little bit. That's all. They, if they're putting it in there, I, I would like to just feel that a little bit more. They need to make a picante super duper. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had, like I said, uh, it's not, it's a little different than the, the original, just the Clamato. But it's just, I don't feel the picante just gives me too much more of a, a difference. But that's just me. Yeah. I'm obviously drinking it because I have nothing left in here. <laughs> so I'm got, enjoying it. So I'm still, enjoying it. I've still got some. Uh, let's see what the comments say real fast. And then I'm not going to read any more comments. Can't do this all night. Grapefruit sculpin is mighty tasty. Yeah. And the first time I tried it was where? At Michael's, where in Brooklyn, and he 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 had me very fooled because he said, "What do you think about this beer?" I said, "It's a solid A. I'll guarantee you that." He said, "But do you notice anything in it? Something added?" I said, "No, I don't." He kept pressing me on it. I said, "I don't notice anything added." Well, then he revealed it. It's grapefruit sculpin. I said, "Dang, I didn't taste any grapefruit." But when you don't know, you don't know. Uh, the brew dude oh he's talking to eric we can team up it's good there are a lot of crappy craft beers lawrence said yeah i don't know if there's a lot but there's a, a significant magic hat crappy you know what uh I, i've enjoyed a lot of what i've had from magic hat so maybe i'm just a nut or a, or a, or maybe my taste faculties are poor but i've enjoyed a lot of magic hat beers all tech out of Louisville makes some subpar barrel aged beers. Yeah, you know that's a dog food company that makes beer. True story. I've seen All Tech. They have some IP. All Tech is a very bizarre company, but you know it's funny that just that you mentioned that. Uh, I I work a I work around a lot of uh, uh, I guess we can call it pet food. And some pet foods, a lot of the pet foods have brewer's rice, brewer's yeast, you know, um, brewer's corn in the back of it. So there's, some, there's some synergies. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you think about it, think of like a, a large brew, like Budweiser, which uses rice, correct? And when, when, they, when they use this this rice in their beer, what's what's going to happen to the spent rice? What do we do with it, you know? Uh, Sell it to a Team up with company. another company. Exactly. Team up with a company or whatever the case is. The same, with, the same with corn or all this spent yeast. Everything spent grain is going to be reused and recycled somewhere, whether it's uh, for, for chicken feed, for horse feed, uh, whatever the case is, you know? I mean, it's just like this big old... Yeah, just as a filler. Yeah, I was at Anheuser-Busch Brewery Tour, and they said, look, we don't waste any of the stuff. We've got cattle feed companies that back their trucks up to the brewery, and they buy all the spent corn, the spent uh, barley, the spent rice, and they feed it to cattle. Okay, they don't waste it. That's it. All the beech wood that they use to uh, form the natural carbonation, they sell it to a big company that does mulch. They chop mm -hmm. it up and sell mulch. Um, they said, really, they don't wait, waste any of it. They just um, sell it. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. I had myself a nice medium rare steak and a beer. Essentially, I was having the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> indirectly. Well, this was really an 
interesting hangout. Oh, that last little taste, the spice was even more prominent. Hmm. Um, I'm glad everybody could join us, Bill and Michael as an observer status, Jose, William. Uh, I will put this out there, and this is not to pressure anybody. It's just to say I've got it if you want to hang out. I've got this, and this is from California, so I know it's a national brand. I've got a whole lot of it left, about 80% left. This is called Sheffield Oak Aged, I'm sorry, Sheffield Oak Mellowed Tawny Port. Oh, well, this is a fascinating wine from uh, Sheffield Cellars of California. It is 18% alcohol, so if you drink too much, you may run into some complications. complications. But by golly, I was so impressed with that, that wine. I just can't wait to drink more and more and more of it. But um, I'm just saying, hey, folks, I've got some more left if you want to drink. Do some drinking and hanging out with me. Let me know. Um, all right. So next week we're gonna wrap up the Budweiser line of Clamatos because we're doing Bud Light Chilada with extra lime. <laughs> and I've already bought mine. Extra, so limon. extra limon. E limon. Elimo. Jay, is something going on tomorrow with RC through the other group? You know, the group I'm talking about that's on Facebook? They do hangouts every Thursday night. I'm usually in bed by then watching some sports and falling asleep. But um, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with their hangouts because they're, you know, they don't want to just keep grasping for topics. And I, think I heard that they were thinking about doing new beers of 2017. Yeah, and then they were saying they might just do a free-for-all, like just say, and I, I told RC, I like this idea better than any of the other ideas. They were just saying, let's just have a beer hangout where we talk about whatever comes up. like Just so general like, stuff. Like hanging out at the bar room. I said, yeah, I like that idea because um, it's difficult. And the problem with talking about all the beers you've drank, that bores a lot of people to death because they haven't had those beers so they're sitting there listening to, I had this, it tastes chocolatey. Well, I had this IPA and it was so bitter. And a lot of people are, and, and me included, are thinking, I wouldn't want to watch a bunch of movie reviews for movies I've never watched and that I have no intention to watch. You know what I mean? It's a difficult thing. That's why I wanted to do the beer brands, because then you can focus on a single topic. That's why I started that about four years ago. You pick a beer brand and you focus on the topic, but that's that's my personality. Although I did kind of get off topic tonight, so I undermine my own thematics to some extent. So if you're there tomorrow, maybe I'll try to get in and say hello to the group there too, because um, general stuff is always fun. Yeah, I might do it. It just yeah, they always do like at five, right? I mean, I, well, they do eight Eastern, something five like o'clock your time. 8 Eastern. And then Lee, and then uh, <laughs> Lee Russell said, and excuse my language, he said, I watched one of those hangouts with Rajay and Jay was drunk off his ass. You know what? I, I would prefer to use expression like I was exuberant because <laughs> I had been doing some of the Beams 8 star <laughs> experimentation in I think it was just an exuberance more than P off H A. But, you know, it's how you perceive it. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was talking about. I remember it more or less. So, you know, but anyway, it was fun. You got to do the research, right, Ronald? So I'm taking off, guys. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Michael. Have a good night. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. I like your mustache. Yeah, you know, it's like experiential research. I could get, you know, and do, I could find out, oh, well, uh, Beam Centauri lists this brand in this part of their website. But until I drink it down and think on it, I can't really experience it and um, say I researched it so well. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other things we could hang out and talk about if anybody has any time. 
and I'm not pressuring people because I don't really have a whole lot of time for that. But um, mm -hmm. um, I got the Sheffield. Oh, I bet you nobody will find this oddball item. It's called Krabari. Krabari Marsala. If yeah. You ever, if you see that stuff, when I saw that, my jaw dropped. But Albertsons, Albertsons is a weird store. They sell the most odd items. And I was in there and I said, <gasps> I couldn't resist. I had to buy it. Krabari. And that's a family that used to own a winery. They got bought out like everybody else. But um, I couldn't resist. Um, anyway, enough of this chit chat, blah, blah, blah. Any last statements? My last statement is if you if you want to try a good clamato or chilada, clamato, chilada, try the picante. I think you'll probably like it. And that's all I got to say. Of the four that I tried, I would grab this one first. By far. Yeah. Overall, I think it's the best combination of the of the good things about each one of them. I would take this one. I agree. Yeah, I'm I'm with that as well. And and I mean, I would encourage anybody to just try the style. It gets so much of a of a. There's so much of a, a trepidation about about the style, but once once you kind of get into it, uh, I think you like it. I agree. I agree. Don't be scared, people. Roosevelt wasn't talking about chiladas, but all we have to fear is fear itself. So. <laughs> right. Give it a chance. <laughs> Unless you're allergic to any of the ingredients, it's not going to make you sick. That disclaimer. Not you're right, Wade. It's not going to make you throw up. It's just going to taste different. It's going to be a little different. And that's okay with beer. So, okay, last bit of talk, and then I'm off of this, is um, we got the uh, the Ilo, e Limon next week. And then the week after, we got Make Your Own Chilada, and I've already got mine ready to go. Um, then we're going to get off into Budget Beer with Rockdale Light, the new and improved Rockdale Light. Then we've got Milwaukee's Best Ice, the new higher alcohol Milwaukee's Best Ice, which I've already got my can ready to go. And then after that, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> I run out of ideas. <laughs> I still got I still got 10 cans of Milwaukee's Best Lager I'm trying to get rid of down here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get I could not get it, man. <laughs> Somebody did you a favor, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know what? I like that beer, so we cannot be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta tell you, you know, la last week I wasn't I wasn't able due to audio problems, I wasn't able to say a word, right? Right. But but I gotta say, you know, th that's like there there was like a, a Miller bias working there. But I, I didn't happen to like that beer at all. But like one of my go-to beers is Ice House, so it's a Miller product, but but that Milwaukee's Best just just didn't work for me. Oh man, it's really working for me. But um, get ready because they're about to jack Ice House up to six point nine, which to me is a terrible mistake. But who am I? I'm not I'm not anybody with any influence over Miller, which is owned by Molson Coors. I have no influence. I love that old 5.5% Ice House, though. Oh, boy, I might have to do a farewell video. I saw it today. I was looking for the 6.9. as I. It's been spotted, but it's not here yet. But I'm going to grab a couple cans of the 5.5. I've never had the 5.5. Oh, boy, I've been drinking that since 1996. I want to do a comparison when the new one comes out. Like, I want to do a comparison between the uh, Milwaukee's Best Ice. I've got a couple cans of 5.5. Nine I picked up the other day still had a good uh, freshness date on it. You mean the five point five? Yeah, I, I picked up the the MB Milwaukee Best Ice is five point nine. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I grabbed a couple. Oh, all oh, right, right. You're gonna do the Milwaukee's Best Ice, old and new. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that'll be a fascinating experiment. I could almost sit there right now and write out notes for you and tell you how they're gonna taste. 
I like the five point nine. I think it's a you sleeper. Need, it's it's I really like it. You need to get a channel, Willie. <laughs> you need to get you on a channel. We trying to start it, but he won't do it. But we trying to pr we're trying to push him into that new world. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> Training wheels. Right. Yeah, boy. All right. Well, <laughs> we're gonna keep trying. Hey, well, um, everybody, I appreciate you joining. I appreciate Michael joining in a, as an observer status, and then we had Eric, a Lions fan, joining us pre-air before we went on air as observer, as an observer. So, um, hey, well, last last uh, word is uh, if you get a chance, check out the uh, chiladas. You just might be very surprised. And that's that.